In today's video, we're going to discuss why you don't let fear drive your financial decisions. Let's get started. Have you ever noticed that the most common command in scripture is do not fear? Turns out people are pretty terrified in life and they need constant reminding that they shouldn't be. When it comes to money, fear is often one of the most driving forces in people's decision making. Here are three ways fear wants to control your finances and what you can do to kick that fear to the curb. Fear number one, the panic purchaser. In the year 2020, the world was rocked by the fear of something new. A virus known as COVID-19 swept across nations, causing severe sickness and in some cases, even death. People out of fear, rushed to the stores to stockpile on essentials and luxury items to make staying at home a more comfortable experience as government guidelines became to keep your distance from other people. This caused massive supply shortages as people hoarded the things they feared running out of. Then, when told of a potential cure for the disease, millions flocked to hospitals and medical kiosks to stand in line and try the experimental treatment. The panic buying created supply chain problems, and for many, the experimental treatment was worse than the disease itself. The fearful financial decisions made by people in 2020 resulted in the very things they were hoping to avoid, famine and disease. And to make matters worse, Many people paid small fortunes in their panic buying, sometimes paying way too much for the things that were in short supply. So fear facilitated famine in finances as well. If you want to avoid the panic purchase, plan ahead for the unknown. Try to have a month of canned goods and supplies stashed away before there is an emergency. Also, Prepare your body for potential threats by making a concentrated effort to make healthier choices in normal times. As it turns out, COVID-19 was the worst for people who had pre-existing health concerns. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Focusing on preparedness in your supplies and your health could help you avoid having your finances negatively affected in the future. And having an emergency fund, money you set aside for the unknown, could help you have a cushion in case of any unexpected expenses. So that's fear number one, the panic purchaser. Fear number two is the pessimistic purchaser. The pessimistic purchaser is almost like the opposite end of the spectrum to the panic purchaser. Instead of being unprepared for disaster and panicking when it comes, some people over-prepare for it. Now, I know there's a school of thought out there that says there's no such thing as being overly prepared. And believe it or not, I kind of agree with that. But not if it's coming from a place of fear. Here's why. If you're too fearful about what might happen, you might just spend a small or even large fortune on an event that may never take place which can, of course, get you to the point of wastefulness. You say, yeah, but Dave, at least I'll have the peace of mind knowing I am prepared. That's true. I'll give you that. But at some point, you have to ask yourself, what are you putting your trust in? Are you trusting in your riches to protect you? Or are you trusting in God to protect you? The answer should be God. And yes, you should use some of the finances he gives to prepare for the worst, like we discussed in the last tip. But being overly concerned about the future can actually strip you of your finances as you buy far too much insurance or stockpile too many supplies. The flip side of this same coin is what I call the pessimistic non-purchaser. This is when you fear failure and see failure in itself as a disaster. This fear will grip you and cause you to hesitate making you miss out on some real financial opportunities. I see this all the time with stock traders. They get so fearful of failure, they pessimistically decide not to purchase a stock that is clearly at a great price point to buy. Later, they find themselves looking back on these missed opportunities and they say things like, oh man, I knew that was gonna work. But did you really know? I mean, if you knew, you would have done it, right? But no. What they really knew was that there was this big, scary possibility that they could fail, and it paralyzed them from taking a good risk on a real opportunity. The pessimist lives in fear, and that can cause them to spend too much for protection or too little on production. 
Allowing fear to drive your finances can make you poor from overspending or poor from underspending. Matthew 6.34 says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In other words, don't bring an evil fear of the future into your walk of the present, or you might end up regretting the performance of your past. Proverbs 11.24 says, There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. What this means is that you should use your money and don't make the mistake of hoarding it for fear of failure. Because saving too much can result in poverty, which by the way, sounds like failure to me. Again, fear produces what it seeks to avoid. Instead of letting fear drive your financial decisions, practice trusting God with your finances while setting aside just enough to give yourself a jump start on a disaster. This will free you up to enjoy life and not be robbed of present opportunity for fear of future failure. So that's fear number two. Don't be a pessimistic purchaser or non-purchaser. Fear number three is the one I call the FOMO financer. The fear of missing out will drive people to make the most terrible financial decisions. As the economic impact of COVID-19 has continued to rock the world, we have seen a rise in inflation. Things are getting way more expensive because people are buying a lot while trying to prepare in advance in case there are more disasters that strike. We fight inflation by raising the cost to borrow money. These are called interest rates. As these costs rise, the fear of missing out on lower interest rates sets in and people take out as much debt as they can at the lower interest rates, seeing it as their last opportunity for cheap money. The problem here is that people get into debts they can't really afford to pay. The fear of missing out leads these FOMO financers to be so strapped for cash that they end up missing out on great opportunities. And they could have otherwise afforded them had they not gotten in so much debt to begin with. Instead of letting FOMO make a fool out of you, recognize that saying yes to financial freedom means being okay with sometimes missing out on opportunities. Instead, get laser focused and always know the costs before you make the purchase. Jesus reminds us of this principle when speaking of counting the cost of following him. Luke chapter 14 says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Letting the fear of missing out drive your financial situations will cause you to forget to count the cost, and you'll find yourself in a bind later, causing you to, guess what, miss out. So that's number three, the fear of missing out purchaser. So there you have it, three big fears that drive people's finances, panic, pessimism, and FOMO. The ironic thing about acting on these fears is that in doing so, you'll likely only be bringing those fears into reality, which is why you don't let fear drive your financial decisions because fear almost always produces that which it seeks to avoid. Remember, 2 Timothy tells us, for God hath not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And sound mind means self-control. Don't waste time, energy, and money on fear. Instead, realize that fear does not come from God. Power does. You can stay in control of those finances and you can kick fear to the curb. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more, check out the links in the description below. We'll see you next time and then we'll see you in the market. Thank you.